A Washington man says scammers got him for nearly $60,000. Ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to securing your money, no bank is 100% perfect. Credit unions can be slightly better as they work for their clients as a nonprofit instead of a for-profit like branch banks. But the reality is, you know, scammers can infiltrate just about any bank account. But he says the bank knew it was happening and failed to stop them. Fox 13's Matthew Smith has been digging into this, and there are some lessons in this for anybody who's watching. Matthew? The biggest thing here is how you react. In, in this case, the customer, Richard Wood, he contacted his bank, he went to his bank, but the FBI tells us that there are extra steps that we should all know about. Now, when you notice unusual activity or strange transactions in your bank statements, you wanna do everything in person, physically get in your car and drive to your bank to speak to someone because with zero liability protection, you will be reimbursed for promptly um, reported unauthorized transactions subject to certain conditions. Now, if you file a dispute over the phone or maybe through your, you know, your bank's uh, mobile app, and the transaction is actually fraudulent, nine times out of 10, you will be reimbursed because every bank is FDIC insured. However, there are instances where fraudulent transactions have not been reimbursed. And unfortunately, these people have lost thousands and thousands of dollars to scammers. So that's what we're gonna get into. They were the ones who were supposed to be our protectors when it came to our account. And in my uh, my view of them right now is they're the villains. They're the it's safe to say Richard Woods way. felt let down by key bank fast forward to june 26 of this year that's when the bank called to tell him about unusual activity he called the main number to ensure it was the bank it was and they said they were handling it the next day the same call that's when he went to a branch in person to report fraud he felt confident until a text two days later. My balance basically fell to, I believe, $38, somewhere in the $30 to $40 range. So then I immediately checked my uh, banking account and noticed that $59,500 was being withdrawn. Now that amount being taken out was being taken out as an ACH debit, basically uh, what you'd see for a payroll deduction. Uh, Woods did everything that you'd expect him to do. He called the bank, he went to the bank, and they were assuring him his his money was safe. While they were investigating, that money wasn't going anywhere. So Key Bank told this gentleman, you know, his money is safe, no need to worry, it's not going anywhere. We have everything under control. <laughs> Boy, were they wrong. A few days go by, you know, and all of a sudden his money's gone. That's what Key Bank said. Doesn't even make sense. And now here's what really happened. Someone must have gotten his account details, his account credentials, and they used this information to send themselves a wire from his bank. It showed up on his bank statement as an ACH debit, right? But both wire transfers and ACHs work in similar ways, just with different timelines and rules. Wire transfers are direct. You know, generally they are immediate transfers between two financial institutions, whereas ACHs pass through an automated clearing house and can sometimes take up to a few business days. ACH payments are what make direct deposits work for employees. You know, money is transferred from the business bank account to the employee's bank account. So what the scammer must have done was he must have got he must have knew this gentleman had a business bank account with a good amount sitting inside of it. So what he did was, you know, after the account was flagged by the financial institution, which in this case is Key Bank, you know, he must have made try to make a couple transactions. The account was flagged. Then after the account was flagged by Key Bank, and Key Bank told, you know, the gentleman who owned the account that everything was fine, that they had everything under control. The scammer then was able to go back into the account and wire out almost $60,000 through ACH debit transactions. He physically went to the bank to talk to his account manager on July 3rd. On the 5th, it was the branch manager. Then on the 6th, he was told the money would be back by the 18th. But after a few days turned to weeks, he was told on the 20th, the money was already gone. In fact, it moved banks all the way back on the fifth. The bank allowed somebody to go in behind closed doors and steal almost $60,000 after my account's been flagged. The bank allowed this to happen. Now, I highly doubt that this money was transferred to one single bank account. It was probably split up and sent to multiple fraudulent bank accounts. Now, why would someone want to open up, you know, a bank account fraudulently in your name, a fraudulent bank account in your name? For many reasons, you know, scammers may want to access your credit, launder money, evade taxes or even commit uh, check fraud if you have any suspicion that this is being done to you you want to go to the federal trace commission's website that is identitytheft.gov or you can call 1-877-438-4338
You may also want to contact the three major credit reporting agencies that is Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion. Kindly ask them to place you know, a fraud alert, maybe even a credit freeze on your accounts. Contact the fraud department at your credit card issuer, Visa, MasterCard, as well as your bank and any other places where you have financial accounts. Now, what this gentleman should have done to speed up the process is he should have went online and filed a report at ic3.gov. They're the Internet Crime Complaint Center. They're the nation's central hub for reporting cybercrime. It is run by the FBI, which is the lead federal agency for investigating cybercrimes. And you want to be sure to remember this information if you ever, you know, fall victim to a scammer or you're in a situation like this where you have been you know taken advantage of because they are the best people to contact if you ever are in a situation like this they will look into your case and they will do everything they can to help you unlike your bank big banks branch banks like you know key bank chase wells fargo bank of america they don't they don't really care about you they only care about making profit pleasing shareholders so most of these banks fraud departments are a complete joke you know and they almost never really do anything to help their clients don't get me wrong you still want to take all necessary measures go to your bank speak to your banker you know, let them know what's happening you know file a fraudulent uh transaction dispute with them but also file a claim with ic3.gov that is the best course of action to take to ensure that your case you know is actually thoroughly looked into and is handled properly by the right people that can actually help you the moment you get that alert or from your bank that money's gone out or that you slock in and see that in your account you need to report it to ic3 they have a good success rate as far as getting freezes on those accounts and people getting their money back for woods he could have been out of luck but it turns out he wasn't giving up while we were reporting on this story, he got his complaint on an executive's desk. And when they learned Fox 13 was looking into it, their reaction changed. The money is now back in his account. I should say KeyBank isn't even commenting whether Wood is a customer of theirs, but we've looked at his emails with KeyBank, and they indicate that this landed all the way up on the CEO's desk, and a manager is now telling Wood that they're going to be reviewing their practices and training methods for situations just like this one. It's black and white, you know, clear as day. They didn't want to reimburse the man because either, either they felt as if maybe he was partially or even fully responsible. Maybe there was just a misunderstanding, a miscommunication somewhere down the chain of command, you know, which is why IC3.gov is so helpful in these situations because they will help push your message through, putting more pressure on the bank to thoroughly look into your, your you know, your dispute. As we heard, KeyBank didn't even want to reimburse the money, said it was already gone. But when they learned Fox 13 was investigating, um, suddenly the money appeared back in the account. Very interesting. Now, this case went all the way up to the CEO, the CEO of KeyBank's desk. We've looked at his emails with KeyBank, and they indicate that this landed all the way up on the CEO's desk. Very interesting indeed. You know, KeyBank, just for the record, has to be one of the worst banks you could ever do business with. Um, you, you have so many better options out here. You know, I would personally recommend a credit union such as Navy Federal or maybe Belco if you, you know, you don't, you, if you don't have any ties to the military. You definitely want to go with that financial institution you feel would have your best interest and i can tell you no branch bank has your best interest at heart or even in mind